Hello again, everyone, and welcome back again for another build. Uh, I'm just enjoying a little bit of taquitos here while I'm checking this thing out. Let me turn on the light so you can see what we got going on here. This is an old computer. This thing is over 10 years old. I got this from a guy at work. And um, I, I kind of wanted to do it as a challenge. And also because um, I felt kind of bad that my last video... Uh, Maybe some of those parts might have been out of reach for some of you guys, and <clears throat> that's actually not who I target on my channel. <coughs> um, I target you guys that like to uh, build computers and play around and what have you. So um, I decided to step back a little bit here and show a little love to you guys. And today we're going to work on the AM3 platform. Not the AM3 Plus, the AM3, just the AM3. And I have the perfect candidate for it. I got this HP computer here um, that... Uh, what's the model? The P6823W. This thing is old you can go ahead and reference that if you want maybe you got one that's why you stopped here to watch this video all right so <clears throat> today what we're going to do is i'm going to show you guys all kinds of neat hacks tricks tips and all kinds of stuff to make this old 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 10 year old computer pretty kick ass and uh you know what i'm going to use in it i'm going to use a bunch of junk parts um, I'm not going to use any new parts um, because I, I, I want you guys to play along too if you have this stuff. Uh, if you're a, a computer junk part collector, uh, you can play along and maybe you'll end up with the same type of computer. Uh, you don't have to play along if you don't want to. But uh, we're going to do some RGB in here and I'm going to show you guys a uh, new RGB hack that I haven't shown before. It's one that I kind of had to do uh, because of today's sponsor. And so today's sponsor actually might want to uh, take note of what I do here and uh, think about what I say about their product. Let's, uh, let's get to it. Today's video is sponsored by Sahara Gaming featuring the Pirate Eye 120 RGB fans. More on that later. Let's uh, get to the build. Okay, guys. Uh, we're going to start our little adventure out in the BIOS setup. Um, I got the board all taken out from the case. And I have it on a little makeshift test bench right now. And uh, I made a couple tweaks and adjustments to it. I haven't added anything much to it. But I just wanted to take a look at it uh, while I have a couple add-in cards. Um, I'm running a GT1030 on here. This is one of uh, several GT1030 builds that you'll be seeing me doing. Um, that way we have an HDMI signal, which is what we're seeing here on the screen with the HDMI out uh, going into my uh, capture card so we can see the BIOS. Um, anyways, <clears throat> excuse me. as you can see, uh, all our memory banks are full. We've got uh, 4 gigs in each bank for a total of 16 gigs on here uh, running at 10600 speed, which is, you know, uh, it'll say 133 in the thing there, but it's, you know, DDR2, DDR3, excuse me. Now, I want you to take a look at the BIOS uh, revision here on this. Uh, let's make, let, me, let me switch my keyboard real quick. There we go. Um, take a look at the BIOS revision on this. Uh, I want you to notice that it's BIOS revision 6.07, and it's got a date of 5-4 of 2011. So that's the last known BIOS um, that this board took. So you might want to look around, check your BIOS on this board if you're using this board uh, before you proceed with any of the stuff that we're going to do. Make sure you at least have the last known BIOS. Doesn't mean it's going to do much for you. Um, I'm sure there's probably some vulnerabilities that are going to be out there in there. and So you're doing this at your own risk. But, uh, you know, we're having fun today on this board. So make sure you have the latest BIOS first and foremost. Um, looking at this, let's see, there's not much else to see here. You got your SATA controller, uh, power, virtualization, uh, boot device priority. Um, you can switch between stuff, 
hard drive group, hard drive group priority, no hard drive installed, network's been disabled. Ah, man, let me exit back here. So, yeah, like I said, there's not much you can do in here, but I want to show you a hack, a really cool hack. Um, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and exit here, and it's going to ask quit without saving, and I'm going to hit enter and hit yes. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to try getting back into that BIOS again. This time I'm going to hold, or I'm going to tap the F10 key and the control key, the left control key at the same time. I'm going to spam those both at the same time after I hit enter. And uh, let's see what happens here. Hopefully I can do this hack uh, while I'm recording. Let's try this. There, I did it. <laughs> Got it. All right. Now, uh, we'll, we'll start over here first. So I'll show you all the other goodies that we can do here. Not too much more, but there are a couple tweaks that we can do here that are uh, really cool. All right. First of all, we can take a look at the System IDs tab now. If we go down here, if you look, we can actually play with these values now. Exit moon just random words dog see we can change those values to things that's pretty neat huh uh not only the product name the serial number uuid sku number <laughs> build id all those things uh pretty cool first of all uh let's see going to the advanced tab you can see that we actually have some options for the PCIe graphics port, we can actually make that a uh, 1x port if we want. Uh, SATA controller enabled, SATA controller mode, uh, USB ports. It just shows what's plugged in right now. It's the keyboard and mouse, onboard LAN, hardware monitor. Now this is the one that you're really going to be interested in hardware monitor what this allows us to do is uh mess with the fans uh pwm um now it doesn't have true pwm it, it actually has um a three pin on here which would pick up the rpm and the computer you know decides internally it doesn't anyways there's not much you could do for adjustment here uh, but you can ad adjust it right down here. You can adjust the uh, starting RPM, uh, PWM, the slope of the PWM, the delta temperature. It's, it's, it's pretty neat here. It's system fan, same thing. Now, what I, another, one thing I did here, um, notice where it says system fan check disabled. Um, I disabled that. That way, when I have that system fan unplugged on the side there, it doesn't beep on me. Ha! -ha. Now, I know in Dell there's a way to do it too, and I I wish I knew that hack. And if I find out one of these days, I'm gonna share it. Um, but there there's a way to do it on a Dell as well on some of these old Dells, uh, cause some of them are like that. You know, you put in a uh, or you put you unplug your fan, you're, it's going to beep, whatever, you get a message on the screen. Uh, there's a way to control that. But in HP, it's actually pretty simple. Uh, like I said, control F10 as you're booting. It, it depends on the model, too. This doesn't work on all of them. But on these ones that are about 10 years old, this hack works. So uh, let's back out of this here for a second here and move it along here a little bit. Another thing you're going to see is uh, on the boot screen um, where you get an end of post beep uh, that you can enable or disable. Um, what that'll do is that as soon as it's done doing its post thing, it'll go beep, beep, and then it'll start the operating system. Kind of annoying. It's, it's best just to leave that disabled. So, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's about all we can do. And, and that's just the little hack that we can do. One of many that are coming up. Uh, I think I spent enough time with this. Um, let's get back to the build.
<laughs> All right, guys, to get started, I got this gutted out from its case now, and I have it kind of jerry rigged up here onto a little test bench with some uh, L bracket uh, little feet there on it. And uh, I have it kind of torn apart, and I've been doing some experimenting on this. Um, and I'm not going to show those scenes just because I want to fast forward for camera time because uh, I have a lot of stuff to cover on this, a lot of hacks to talk about, and a lot of things to do. Uh, this is a very, very old computer, so uh, it doesn't have a lot of things that more modern computers have, but there are some things that we can do to it that I'm going to take advantage of. I don't know if any of you knew this or not, or... Just an FYI, this is a network uh, thing down here. I'm pretty sure we can add a Bluetooth to this um, like I do on the Dells. So we're going to add a Bluetooth module to this right here. Um, we're going to take advantage of the 1X slots right here to add some more functionality to it. And you'll see that as we go along here. Of course, we'll have a graphics card, the GT1030. Um, I think that's probably the best suited card for this type of board um we'll get to that later um the best cpu you could put into this is an amd phenom 2 x6 1065t 95 watt um that's the maximum this board will support and uh if you know where to pick one up, then uh, I would suggest putting one in. I would not suggest, however, spending money trying to find one. Um, I think it's a wasted effort considering what you can get out of this board. But maybe, you know, you know where you can grab one or somebody that's got one, or maybe you've got one in an old system. It would uh, work absolutely for this, but I think uh, the 1065T would probably be better suited maybe for a better board. But it is the max that this board holds, so that's what we're going to put into it. The 1065T uh, AMD Phenom 2 X6 chip. Um, it holds 16 gigs of memory. I'm going to test that later on, see if it goes higher, just to see if it does. It probably doesn't, but you never know. If it does, I'll let report back. But for now, I've got 16 gigs in here. Uh, that we're going to run on and uh, of course like I said uh, we're going to do some RGB stuff so the first thing I want to do RGB wise on this Phenom is actually put the cooler in and for that I had a lot of choices to make and I could have went with you know anything and I guess to be fair to be reasonable about this and still make this a cool build what I'm going to use is let me get it out of the box here I have this that I have never ever used before. It still even has the thermal compound on it. This is a uh, prism cooler. So that's what I'm actually gonna install on this. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I tell you what, I'm gonna do that off camera just cause this camera is in my way. And you gotta be kind of careful with that uh, stuff on the bottom there. So I'm gonna cut this scene, I'll come back, and we'll talk about something else. All right, so I got my uh, CPU cooler installed now. And I played around with this thing a little bit more. Um, as you can see, I've got a couple of add-in cards in. Um, we'll take these out, we'll show you what these are. First of all, this one here is a USB-C add-in card. Uh, right here see that and then you get three USB 3.0's right there and in the back it has a uh, connector for a USB 3.0 front header uh, that'll work for our case swap that I plan to do or you might be planning to do this was a uh, special card uh, no external power needed allegedly we'll we'll find out how that works and then we got <coughs> right here in this slot we have a uh, 600 megabyte per second uh, Bluetooth 4.0 wireless LAN card. Uh, that way we have our uh, Wi-Fi and our Bluetooth all in one card. So we're going to add Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Now I checked this out and I tried <coughs> excuse me, several different types of uh, B key type adapters and cards and stuff in there and <coughs> excuse me um wi-fi works just fine i had no problems with that it's just the uh 
<coughs> excuse me, Bluetooth. It wouldn't show up in device manager or nothing, so there was nothing there. So um, obviously this isn't going to work for Bluetooth unless it comes through here. I'm not sure what this little uh, port is right there. That very well may be the case right there, but I don't know. But uh, <coughs> I couldn't use the card that I wanted to use in this car, uh, slot right here. So, uh, <coughs> that looks like it could fit an MSATA. And it, it can fit an MSATA. If you put an MSATA SSD in there, it'll fit. But it's not going to read it. Uh, which kind of sucks. But you can actually get PCI uh, 1X adapters that'll read an MSATA and have that run on here if you wanted to. And actually, speaking of which, uh, one other thing that I tried was this. This here is a uh, SATA M.2. And this is an NVMe. Um I got them to uh, boot. Absolutely. Uh, well, not boot. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I got to take that back. Take that back. I don't want to misquote. Don't misquote me. I got them uh, to show up in the operating system. Windows did recognize them. So, but the only caveat to that is you got to have at least a 4X slot to run one of these in. Uh, not something we can do on this board unless we run it on the uh, PCI Express slot. Let me take that out real quick here. We'll take a look at that. Ugh. Put this over here on some plastic. All right. So yeah, see this this thing right here takes a 4x slot. So let me scoot this out of the side, off to the side here. Make some room so you can see this. How it would go into the 16x slot, of course and we can run it and these slots see it just does not fit so we can't use it there the only way we can use it here for nvme speeds is we would have to use the integrated graphics and unfortunately um as far as i can tell there are no uh good decent graphics for windows uh maybe windows 7 not Windows 10. Uh, we don't know about Windows 11. <laughs> yeah, the fat chance that it would ever happen. Maybe there's something that'll pop up and come along. If there is, maybe I'd have to do a follow-up on it. But myself, personally, I have not found um, any drivers that would work for uh, the newer versions of Windows for this computer. Um so if you're going to upgrade it you're going to want to put another video card in here guys um there's there's many choices to go with uh bare minimum something in the range of the hd 5450 this is an ati radeon uh yeah or ati this is an old one let me read it i don't think it even says on here but it's an HD 5450 is what it is. It's got one gigabyte of uh, RAM on it. Um, yep, I'm talking old parts today. I know this is a really, really old uh, GPU, but at bare minimum, this should work for you okay. Like I said, we're not doing a gaming thing here. Don't think I'm doing a gaming computer. I'm not. Uh, I am doing a... Uh, basically bringing this one back to life. Uh, give it a few more years use out of it. Um, so that it performs up to uh, the, today's tasks. It should be able to compete with it just fine. Uh, like I said, no gaming. Maybe some light gaming. Uh, I guess search YouTube for that, but uh, we're not going to get into the gaming. So, yeah, that's why I'm going to recommend something like the HD 5450, uh, bare minimum. But if, if you really, uh, realistically, if you're going to spend money on the video card, like I said, you are going to have to go from integrated graphics to a video card invest in a gt1030 that's why i'm actually going to be showing a lot of these gt1030 videos all around it's a good card you're not going to get but maybe a couple uh, frame drops every now and then you know, on youtube uh when you check out um stats for nerds um with a gt1030 uh, otherwise i mean it's it's really really smooth for you know basic 1080p audio so yeah 
Okay, just to mess with your head and confuse you a little bit, um, I skipped forward with this build and completed it. And here's the completed build. Now, if you came here to watch me build a computer, you're kind of shit out of luck because that's actually not what we're doing today. Today, we're talking about the possibilities of the AM3 platform. Um, and as you can see, I have my R RGB all finished up, and we'll get to that here in just a little bit. But right now, I want to talk about things that I've done to this computer. Now, I've done a lot of uh, experimenting with this. Uh, I tried all kinds of different things. I've tried NVMe drives. I've tried SATA drives with adapters. I've tried uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all kinds of stuff. I've tried, <coughs> excuse, <coughs> excuse me, different memory modules. Uh, let me turn this off here. Uh, I tried different memory modules with this uh, to see what would work, uh, different capacities, and uh, all that and here is my conclusion and I want you to pay attention and this is going to apply to this motherboard with the current BIOS revision that I have on here which is the latest one that uh, is available which is what 6.07 or whatever it was I said earlier uh, here's what I got going on on this one now, it might be able to do a little bit more on the graphics but <clears throat> considering the voltage now i'm going to assume i'm going to assume here that you are using the stock power supply now the power supply that i have running in here right now is actually about a 600 watt power supply you do not need that much power uh for what i'm going to tell you this thing is capable of um i think the stock power supply should probably be okay um it, it we'll get into that all right let's talk about that uh before we get into the rgb the process <coughs> excuse me the processor that i have in there <coughs> is of course the 1065t phenom 2 x6 six core the memory that i have in there is actually 32 gigs yes you heard me right 32 gigs of ram are in here samsung modules uh 130 or 1333 megahertz speed uh ddr3 of course um that actually kind of surprised me that that worked uh under windows 7 windows 7 actually showed it running 16 gigs of ram with the modules in here but after i had installed and tried windows 10 and windows 11 uh, those both showed the, the uh entire 32 gigs of ram so 32 gigs of ram will fit in this motherboard now i am assuming i might be wrong here um, I am assuming that the same capacity will work for uh, other chipsets with the same, was it the 785G? Uh, will probably be the same that you could get 8 gig modules in each slot on those other ch chipsets in general. Now, the CPU I used uh, is a 95 watt. Of course, there are uh, better CPUs out there, but considering how old this is, and considering the difference between the, the best 95 watt, which would be the 1065T, and the best 125 watt, which is like the 1090 or five, or maybe even the 1100T, you if you consider the differences in performance between those two um yeah i mean it's stupid to go with those other higher ones um now you're gonna see those uh 1095ts or maybe even the 1100ts on ebay and you're gonna see them like even from china they're they're, they're trying to pawn them off on you don't be tempted by that um now the stuff I'm going to show you today is, is is pretty awesome on this build, but I don't want you to be tempted to go to eBay and try to improve this particular model of computer because I think the prices on that stuff is overrated. And the reason you're going to see like the 
1095Ts and the 1100Ts, uh, those Phenom 6, uh, 2X6s on eBay, is because you can't get rid of them. There's a lot of boards that they don't work in, and this board here happens to be one of those that it won't work into. Uh, this here is limited to like a 95 watt CPU, and that is because of the BIOS locked in at 95 watt. So, I mean, I've got some 1055 T's but that's 125 watt 1055 T I have a 1095 T which is 125 watt I mean if I wanted to I could try them in this computer but they're more than likely not going to work so I'm not even going to dick around with that we're going to leave that out um, yeah so maximum on this board in particular and in general the AM3 platform you want to look for a 1065 T and again don't go looking for these on eBay. If you happen to find one at a garage sale or something, maybe it might be worth buying if the price ain't too bad. Don't go looking for this processor because you're... I mean, like an Intel 2500K uh, CPU would be a lot better than this Phenom chip. But uh, we're not going to say this is a bad chip because we're we're kind of maxing out this platform right now guys and uh i want to show you some performance numbers on this and i want to talk about realistic things you can do to the am3 platform because i know a lot of you guys are probably still on the am3 platform and realistically a 1065t is about the best you're going to get now there are cpus that are better uh like i said but uh wattage wise for what most motherboard support including oems uh aftermarket stuff like you know like the asus and gigabyte and msi stuff from back in that era will support uh higher wattage stuff and maybe we'll do a build in that sometime um i don't know we'll, we'll see what i got lined up because i do have all kinds of am3 shit that i can do for builds but uh for this uh, hp motherboard um we're limited to the 95 watt and uh that's going to be the 1065t so that's what we have running in here and uh the 32 gigs of ram runs just fine in here which is surprising but not surprising i guess uh the performance on the memory <clears throat> now that's a different subject uh, yes it does support 32 gigs of ram on this motherboard but the performance of the memory is probably about a third of what it should be and that's just because of the chipset and how old this uh board is um now i did have to make some tweaks here to the bio settings for the pwm fan control now you see how the fan right now is has been doing this uh the was it like the ryzen effect you know like with that middle there see right there where it's turning orange um if there's not enough voltage going to this fan when it's spinning the uh the amd fan then it actually is not going to do those effects it's actually going to stay kind of a reddish tone if it's not getting the proper voltage so actually that was one of the things i had to do in the bios with that hack that i discussed earlier is uh, i had to go in there and adjust the uh fan rpm and actually turn that rpm up just a little bit and uh we'll, we'll talk about that in a bit when we get more into the components that i put into this uh computer but i had to actually uh tweak that just a little bit so that the rpm actually went up which actually helped my cooling and uh we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that more after a bit i actually kind of want to get to the rgb um but yeah i i think i put the most things that i can put into this board to make it run uh as well as it, it can in a modern uh world uh it it, it actually kind of blew my mind actually that for as old as this computer is that it performs as well as it does um we'll talk about the cards here in a bit but uh now i want to kind of switch tracks and we're going to talk about the rgb in this now as you can see everything has been lit up white here and let me go ahead and turn off the lights and uh let me go ahead and then 
take this controller here, which I, I know you can't see it right now. Maybe over here you can see it. This is the uh, controller for um, Sahara Gaming's uh, fans that you see in here. And uh, now that we can get to our sponsor portion here, we can see the Sahara Gaming fans up on top and in the back here. Now, on the bottom, we had some fans that you would think they're Sahara Gaming, but they're actually not. Um, I had actually asked Sahara Gaming to send me uh, at least six fans, and they only sent me three. So, uh, in order to compensate that, I actually had to use one of Sahara Gaming's... Uh, competitors and this is actually Psy so filling in for Sahara Gaming's complete set of fans that I wish they would have sent me is going to be Psy which look exactly the same perform exactly the same but we can talk about Sahara Gaming's um, <coughs> RGB system now right now as you can see everything in here is absolutely white and let me go ahead and take the remote control from sahara gaming and let me go ahead and push the q1 button and as you can see everything in this computer is doing a rainbow effect now normally this would not be possible with the sahara gaming controller that they give you um if I unplugged the things that I didn't hack out of here. These bottom fans would not light. These side fans over here would not light. This RGB strip light here wouldn't light. The, uh, let me adjust my camera here, sorry guys. The uh, RGB uh, on the RAM would not light. Um, that's all integrated with the Sahara gaming controller that i had to hack now sahara gaming contacted me a while back and and uh i, I we went back and forth and they sent me their stuff and uh i kind of talked to them before i did this video and i told them i said look guys your your stuff isn't that good and uh i don't really like it i said i you know if i do a video about it i might have to speak bad about it and i don't really want to do that to you and I, i'm not going to give you an amazon review because i really don't like your product and uh so i almost kind of refused sahara gaming at first and their stuff and uh but they emailed me back and they said you know hey look you know you know we understand that you know you, maybe you're going to slam us uh, maybe you don't like, you know, what our product is, you know, how it's implemented or whatever, but that's okay because we want your criticism. <clears throat> and uh, after I had read that, um, I had thought about it and uh, I kind of changed my mind a little bit about Sahara Gaming in general as a company just because they had the uh intestinal fortitude and the balls to fucking say um look i know you're going to be a dick about our product but you know what i want you to go out there and i want you to talk about it and tell us what you really think and i want you to tell other people what you think about them and i want you to tell people what you think we can do to improve it and uh, that's really what my channel is about if you look like my my about page um that's really what i do is i take other products that other people maybe have looked at uh maybe have done reviews on if you look at the sahara gaming pirate eye stuff and look for it on youtube maybe you're going to find a bunch of videos uh probably over from uh england or whatever that people have done that's uh i think where they're kind of centralizing and trying to get their uh product promoted from is over there in the uk um the the guys that talk about it just they they, they kind of talk about it like it's just the most wonderful fucking fans in the world and you know that's that's great you know you know you always want to do something to promote a product but realistically um there's some flawed designs in the product and I think that needs to be something that needs to be brought to the attention of Sahara Gaming. And not only Sahara Gaming, but also its competitor, Psy, uh, in general. So I'm not picking on them, but I am advising them 
on uh, RGB here as I'm babbling on here, and hopefully you're following along to what I'm saying. Now, as we're looking at this uh, RGB right now, um, th this is running just Sahara Gaming's controller, which ordinarily will not run all this stuff, like I said, but I did some hacks on it to make it run everything in here. Now, uh, the way I have this configured, I can actually go up to the reset button here. Let me find it in the dark. It's kind of dark here. Hopefully I don't hit the power button. Uh, here it is. And I can actually change the patterns, uh, as you can see, on this uh, computer. And everything on here, let me let me tilt my camera up a little bit. Sorry, guys. Maybe back it up a little bit. Get everything in camera. Um, as you can see, everything on here is synchronized. And this is just pushing the reset button on here using the Sahara Gaming Controller. Now, this is the main beef that I had with the controller uh, when I had uh, done my emails back and forth with Sahara Gaming is that it wasn't integrated enough. Now, you can buy a separate adapter so that you can integrate it like with your motherboard and what have you uh, on the fans that link up. Let me, let me go through a couple uh, things here. But the thing of it is, is what if, you know, the Sahara Gaming Controller is your only adapter? So how are you going to work that? Like right now, okay, like look at these fans, which we'll say is the Sahara Gaming fans going back and forth doing this effect. Well, if we can uh, synchronize this with a motherboard, that's great. But what happens when we're doing effects with this remote control or the buttons on the, uh, you know, on the reset for the LED differences? Is it going to sync up with the rest of the computer? No, it doesn't. So what I had to do was kind of create some connectors that also uh, would plug into the Sahara Gaming controller to get it to sync up with uh, other components that are in this build to see or excuse me to make the effects that you see happening right now now you notice as i change those effects over uh they were all the same like uh l l let me go up an effect here and let's see if we can do this like everything here is red so you can see that the uh, LED strip that I have here is red. Of course, the Sahara Gaming fans on top and bottom are also red. And uh, the memory sticks are red. And of course, you know, I can I can cycle through on my remote control here from Sahara Gaming and everything in this computer is synchronized. Now, if you bought this Sahara Gaming setup uh on its own and tried this um you'd be like well how did you do that and that's actually what i'm going to talk about here in just a bit but it's also a criticism that i want to make to sahara gaming now it's a really easy fix that sahara gaming can do um now when, when you see the advertisement for these fans um, one of the things that they like to stress is that, you know, they, they have their own design or whatever to plug these in, which is great. There's nothing wrong with having your own design. The problem with having it, though, is that when you want to integrate somebody else's type of RGB components, then you're going to run into trouble. Um, and this one, while it does allow a motherboard sync, it doesn't allow you to add other components, which is what we need in this type of build because this is an old, old motherboard. Remember, getting back to this motherboard, this motherboard is, you know, over 10 years old. So it doesn't have the PWM that this thing, you know, says that it has. It doesn't have that motherboard control that this, you know, claims to be able to do. So what are we going to do when we have other components like, you know, 
uh, an RGB strip like this. Maybe we've got some other fans uh, that are a different brand like you see up in front here, which are the thermal right fans. Uh, maybe we have other RGB components uh, like you see right here with the memory modules and stuff like that. So well, what are we going to do? And that's the main beef that I have with Sahara Gaming. And, and it's not only Sahara Gaming. It's these other manufacturers that do like the 6-pin or any other type of 3-pin, whether it's JST, Corsair stuff, uh, regular ASUS, MSI stuff, Gigabyte, whatever. You know, there's, there's no standard for RGB. Um, and that's kind of one of the problems with... Um, RGB uh, in general when you go, would look for something. Sometimes there's 12 volt stuff. Sometimes there's 5 volt stuff. This stuff can be confusing as hell. Um, I think what Sahara Gaming needs to do is um, if it's got a controller that it wants to put out there like the one that I'm actually showing now and we can actually I'll take it here and, and, and go through some of the effects as I'm babbling um, if they have this controller that they have they want to put out there for sale uh, and say well you know this controls are you know Sahara gaming products then they need to make sure that that controller is able to interface with other components that people might want to put into their computer and um, if more manufacturers did that I think their products would sell a lot better um, right now as I'm babbling and I'm actually uh, just standing here in the dark and we're just going through these different colors and stuff uh, I'm listening to this and I actually have this set on low for the fan speed because you can control the fan speed with the remote and um, this is actually a very very quiet machine for the most part I mean it just you don't even hear it at all um, all the Sahara gaming fans which are on here and if you think about it since these two are linked and these two are linked that's only one two three different cables that are going out to control this now that's what it talks about or what what they're talking about when they talk about um cutting down on all the wires and all that stuff now if we were using all sahara gaming stuff around here uh it would only take four one two three four uh total wires to wire into their controller box to control all these fans which would be awesome even if this was like a taller case where you had like three fans here they would still link up it would still only be four wires for a total of what three four five six seven eight fans uh if it was a big case like that cougar case like i did in the last build that i did you're talking nine fans total if you pushed it only controlled by four leads which really cuts down on the wires and it's a good selling point for these uh fans not only that plus the uh effects they do uh like again we'll we'll get down in here so you can see the effects how they're it's kind of shooting back and forth uh it, it's actually falling along let me see if we can find something uh we'll find something I'm going to go through these. I'm going through them fast. Sorry, guys. Here we go. Now, anyways, now you can see the path that these are taking. And one of the things that I noticed that I don't like, uh, now to get into a criticism about these, uh, now that we can see them, is you see how this is going like you know from right or from uh yeah right to left right and it should follow upward if we're, as we're watching this okay see it how it's going right to left it should follow upward but if you look at this fan this fan is when it makes its transition going going downward see what i'm saying um now i could fix that but the only thing is if i wanted to fix it i would have to you know of course flip the fan the other way but there's not enough cable um so one thing that sahara gaming could do to improve this design is let me, let me flip on the lights guys sorry here is uh maybe add a little bit more cable to it um 
this is a very very small case and we'll talk about the case here in a bit it's a very small case and i had just enough length to get the uh cables through that i needed i had three of them connections the, the top or uh, the top bottom and the side here and i had just enough uh <laughs> length where the controller beats which is right about in the middle but like i said this is a tiny tiny case here so um on a bigger case this would not have worked so well uh, what you're seeing going on here, the synchronization, uh, just in the fans on the alone, not counting the uh, RGB on the memory modules and what have you. So um, that's another complaint I would have to Sahara Gaming is they don't make their stuff long enough uh, to make a uh, cool synchronization pattern. I mean, it all works together. And I get the concept of linking fans up. It, it really does cut down on the wire clutter. But um, it, it just, the way it's implemented was not thought out very well. Um, another thing I had noticed is um, the PWM implementation on the Sahara Gaming <coughs> controller. Uh, it does not pick up any RPM signal at all. I tried this on not only this board, I tried it on um, a uh, more modern board, and it did not pick up any PWM at all. So I don't know how their PWM system is working, but I did notice a change in the PWM. Bleh, excuse me, and. Uh, when I did some manual uh, settings in the BIOS on one of the other motherboards. So I'm not sure how their PWM is implemented, but there's something going on there with it that does kind of affect the speed of these when you switch it to um, auto mode on this remote control. Uh, like I said, I, I couldn't read the, the RPMs to know exactly what was going on. But um, I guess it's better than what I've seen from, like, uh, what is it, Asia Horse. Um, I, I Kosher Tech did something on this, too, uh, with their PWM stuff. He couldn't get it working. I couldn't get it working. Uh, actually, I think it actually even kind of maybe even messed up the motherboard on one of the builds I did because it was fine after I disconnected the Asia Horse. So I'm not going to say that the uh sahara gaming implementation of pwm is bad but it's not very good it it, it could we could use some rpm signals coming from these fans to know how fast they're going now if you use one of the adapters from their competitors and where did the adapter go i don't know what i did with one uh in my mess up here somewhere um anyways you can actually get a pwm uh signal from like the psi stuff uh so i know it's possible i think maybe the sahara gaming needs to work on its control um also the the way that this plugs in it's kind of proprietary i don't like that um they need to uh and we'll get to that when we turn to the back side here they need to make kind of an adapter for their stuff uh sell you know not just one maybe two or three of them actually and uh that people can use to add on like i have done here and that's actually all i did is just kind of hacked the additional ports on the controller to uh accept other R additional rgb stuff is all i did here um I didn't do any spectacular hacking to this thing to give it the effect that you're seeing on the screen or right now on your screen. Um, like I said, if I unplugged all the stuff that wasn't Sahara Gaming, um, this bottom fan would not plug in, uh, would not be lit up. This RGB strip would not be lit up. These fans would not be lit up. The memory would not be lit up. All you would see is just this fan and these two fans. 
Um, but that's enough of my babbling. Let me cut this scene and we'll go around the back and take a look at that controller real fast, guys. And then uh, we'll talk about the actual upgrade on this dang computer in just a sec. All right, guys. So now looking on the back of this, we can see the Sahara Gaming controller uh, mounted onto the back of the case. And we can see the six pin stuff that they use. Now, this one over here, don't mind these... Uh, these uh, connectors right over here. There's actually some hacking that I did to it earlier when I was experimenting with it. Uh, that's just me. Um, otherwise, yeah, we see three different... Um, zoom in here. We see three different connectors here, which would be the, the, the top fans, the, the upper fan, the fan over here, and the fan down fans down below, uh, which is actually what two for five fans so we actually cut down on <coughs> excuse me <coughs> two wires <coughs> with the sahara gaming controller and the, the way they link up together which is kind of cool and i get the concept of that um but like i said this is a proprietary connector if we look down in here this is a six pin uh we can't get our usual uh Chinese six pin stuff down in there uh, because it is proprietary, which kind of sucks because I mean, uh, right here, um, I literally get these uh, by like the hundred pack um, off of uh, AliExpress. You can buy it by a 10 pack, single pack, whatever. This is just the simple connector that goes into the standard six pin right there and converts it to the three pin. Uh, this is actually a connector which would match the hack that I've talked about before when it comes to the six pin stuff. Now, this is, of course, a proprietary six pin, so the hack was a little bit different. And you'll actually see that right down here. Let me turn on the light. Um, there we go. Right down here, these three wire leads that are actually coming down from the bottom are actually where I hacked it. And what that was uh let's see uh if we can imagine six in a row yeah here's six in a row right 23 four six this bottom row here is like six in a row um <clears throat> to visualize this of how it works on the six pin uh this would be like positive negative and then right here would be where your rgb starts five volt data ground and then blank is how it worked is how i figured it uh so actually if you look right here and i don't know if i can get this on camera or not uh, i'm gonna try to angle this upward um you can see i kind of put some uh glue down there to kind of hold this steady because i did not have any connectors that would fit up in there i kind of had to make my own um but it's basically like any other rgb 5 volt data ground on that's actually what these uh here are all snipped for is because i was messing with the wires and testing the uh leads in there till i found the ones that were 5 volt data ground to make the same connector that i can get here off of aliexpress for the regular six pin stuff like i said in the uh, 100 pack would cost you about a dime <laughs> so i mean sahara gaming could expand their controller to so much more and so much better when when you want to keep everything proprietary that's fine but the thing about keeping something proprietary is you're kind of locking everybody else out and you know everybody that builds computers maybe they don't have just fans maybe there's other rgb components and i think that's something that sahara gaming and a lot of other these guys that sell their uh stuff over on uh, amazon or wherever need to keep in mind now right here's another adapter uh something that i can get in bulk all right, guys, so we can go ahead and have a look inside the computer now in the operating system itself. Um, as you can see, this is Windows 11. We'll start this out here by going into the task manager, and we will look at the official specs on this according to the performance. 
Um, as you can see, our CPU is an AMD Phenom 2X6 1065T. Memory is 32 gigabytes of DDR3 running at 1,333 megahertz speed. I have a bad habit of doing that. Our first disk is a... Uh, a uh, MX500 uh, Crucial SSD drive. Second one is a one terabyte Western Digital Blue. Uh, let's see. And our GPU that I finally finished up with would be the RX 550, which is just a step higher than the GT uh, 1030. Uh, in performance, and I think this computer can handle it, okay? So I, I think that's probably about the, as high as I'd want to go. I mean, you could do a 1650 in here, absolutely. I tested it with the 1650. Um, but my feelings on that are, if you can afford a 1650, why are you screwing around with a machine that's this old? <laughs> Anyways... <laughs> So, moving along here, let's take a look at a couple of the benchmarks. Now, I did run some gaming benchmarks on here, just to show you this. Um, I think this is, uh, if you're going to game on it, this is absolutely going to be a 720p uh, gamer. Uh, running Heaven uh, at 720p, we see a 72 frames per second uh, with a max of 139 which isn't too bad for gaming in most games. And that's actually why we'd use something like Heaven and Cinebench and, and stuff like that, is to kind of see what kind of settings would be best for us. And, and this is one of the tools I use when I advise people uh, what to set their computer at for gaming is Heaven, even though I'm not a gamer. It kind of gives me a, a better indication. Like, like I said, right here, our max frames 139, uh, we're averaging about 72 frames a second. Uh, compare that to the 1080p results that I got with the RX 550. You're, you're looking at, you know, an average of 32 frames a second with a max of 67. Uh, kind of really takes a hit there when you change the resolution up. So you really, this is not a gaming machine. It's, if it is, it's going to be a low resolution gamer. Um, Let's take a look at a couple things here. Here's a Crystal Disk Mark. Uh, this is what I got on the uh, MX500 drive that's in here right now. Uh, 268 on the read, 250 on the right. Uh, as you can see, that's a lot less than what this thing would normally do. And then that's because of the limitations of the board and the age of the board. Excuse me. And the uh, PCI Express ports and the SATA ports and all that shit. But anyways... Um, this was a read-write that I used testing um, the USB on the computer. And then this was the read-and-write after testing it with the USB add-in card with the USB 3.0. So you can see on the USB 3.0, it, it gained oh, roughly 50% more um, than what it had before, as you can see with the uh, numbers there. So... Kind of worth it. I mean, considering how this is and what we can do to upgrade this, it was kind of worth it. So, and then next is our temperatures, I believe. Yes. Um, let me zoom in this a little bit more. This is our overall temps after running Cinebench on it and Heaven on it and uh, seeing what kind of voltages the GPU put out and the uh, processor. You can see right here the processor actually used 111 watts total. The GPU, the RX 550, used 35 watts peak. Now, this is rated at 50, so if we say 50 watts here, 125 watts, we'll say here for this. That's 175 watts right there uh, out of your power supply just to run the GPU and the processor. Something you want to keep in mind. Now, what I'm going by here is... That I'm expecting that you are going to use the exact same power supply that you have on this um, HP Pavilion. Um, I'm not expecting anybody to upgrade, but I would advise um, if you are going to put some extra stuff in here to maybe beef it up just a little bit more. Um, the one I'm running in here now is actually overkill, but you know what I had <laughs> but maybe I'm guessing 
400 to 450 watt range should probably pretty be pretty decent uh, if you're looking to up the uh, rating on the power supply in this computer. Um, that's where I'd go. It that's be about right. When I when I tested it on my uh, kilowatt to see how much was going to the wall at peak, the peak I seen was 200 watts going to the uh, kilowatt meter. So this is a 250 watt power supply, we'll say, that comes standard with this. I mean, right there, you're already using, what, like, uh, what, two-thirds at least right there of your uh, hard or your power supply's capacity. So you're not stressing it too much uh, with what I had seen. So I think your stock power supply should get you by but just you know if you want and if you do have one around i'd maybe go a little bit beefier on the power supply uh that's what i learned from testing on this otherwise let's look at our temperatures which is really really impressive here uh the phenom um, i'm running that uh amd uh prism cooler of course um 39.6 is what the peak temperature was now that's just amazing uh, today's CPUs ain't much like that when you put a regular uh, cooler on them. Uh, you can see our low is 16.5C at idle. Uh, this is really, really nice. And I did make some tweaks in the BIOS there for the fans. Um, you can see our fan low was 965. It was actually lower than that, and I actually tweaked it in the BIOS to raise it. And it wasn't to change any of my temperatures. It was actually because of the uh, prism fan needs a little bit more voltage when it is uh, spinning to make the color effects. Uh, so I had to kind of find a fine line there where I could get enough voltage to make the color effects for the uh, software. <laughs> but So I actually raised it up to about 1,000 RPM minimum. And uh, we can see that after stressing, it reached 1,600 RPM max. Now this thing will go up to, I think it was 24, 2,500 RPM. I don't remember. It's been a while since i've had to max one out but um yeah anyways the the point is is that it really didn't kick up its rpms too much at all considering what its max rpm is uh because we actually substa stayed substantially cool through all the testing i didn't i did uh 10 minutes on cinebench in the single core 10 minutes on the multi-core plus uh heaven uh to get the results that you're seeing right now uh maxes and minimums and that's with this uh case too which I'll, I'll get back to and talk about a little bit too i actually got a lot of stuff to cover today huh case and some rgb and a swap it's uh kind of a lot of stuff to do but i'm sure it'll turn out terrible in the end but uh just keep listening all right anyway so that's our results there um, I don't think we have anything. Oh, yeah, I guess right here we got the Wraith Prism software. Like I said, we can actually change, of course, the uh, CPU cooler uh, in software. Of course, we can go to our themes here. We'll just oops, reset it to default. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and set that to default. Click apply. Close that up. But, all right, that's... Uh, what I wanted to show you on the statistics here. Now, I did run um, an NVMe drive on here. Like I said, um, I was think I was getting like around 800 on the read. And I think something like in the high 600, low 700 on the right, I want to say. I'll have to look at my uh, thing there. Maybe I might post a picture or something on Bill's GG what the uh, NVMe readings were. Um, readings on the SATA controller that I tried in there, where did I put it? Here it is. Uh, let's see if we can get this on the camera here so you can see this. Um, this holds a uh, 2280 or also 2242 SATA uh, card. You can put two of them in there. It fits in the PCI 1X slot. I tried that in there, and this worked too. Um, you could actually boot with this even. Um, the weird thing is, is when I tried it, I got really good speeds when I was testing it in Cinebench. Uh, I got speeds of around like four. Whoop, I gotta lower this down. I got speeds of around like 400 and uh, some on the read and write, and I was like, cool. So I actually installed Windows on that, 
and tried booting it, and then I re-ran the test, and my speeds were a lot lower. I didn't really get that why it was doing that when the operating system was on the drive itself, but when I ran the, the speed test separate, they were much better, so I don't get that. That's just weird. But, uh, yeah, that's the results of that. So let's uh, go back to the computer over here, now that I'm done babbling about this. We'll give it one last look, and then that's going to be a wrap, and uh, we'll call this a night. Um, let's go right back here, guys. See you in just a second. Okay, one last look at this thing. Um, anyways, so... <clears throat> To conclude what I have is for my add-in cards here, again, as a recap, uh, I got an RX 550 for the GPU. I got a USB-C going on here uh, that adds USB, uh, or not USB, yeah, USB-C and USB 3.0 add-in card here. I'm sorry, but can't talk, uh, which adds USB 3.0 to the front and USB-C and 3.0 to the back. Um... I also have a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth add-in card in here, so this computer now has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And again, um, I, I have tried additional add-in cards, like a SATA add-in card, which did work and does boot. An NVMe card in the 16X slot, which did work, but you would have to use the integrated graphics, which was, does not work out so well uh, with modern OSs, unless, you know, you try something in Linux, but uh, we're not going to fork over with that. Um, a lot of stuff to cover here. Uh, and then I also talked about the Sahara Gaming um, fans, of course, which are pretty cool looking. Now, let's, let me go ahead here and get out the remote, and I'm going to change some of these effects here while I'm babbling, so you can have a look at the uh, some of the things this thing does. Um, <clears throat> uh, like I said, with the Sahara Gaming, I, I, I think if they added some add-ins uh, that people can use for the 6-pin um, that they offer to add additional RGB, then I think that um, that would really benefit uh, them and their customers. Um uh, It looked really, really nice, you know, as I'm shuffling through this, uh, showing the different RGB effects as they look with the Sahara Gaming stuff when it's all synchronized. Um, an another issue, I think, uh, again, to recap, I, I don't think the cables that they give you to um, install on here are long enough. Um, I can, of course, you know, when I like do some of these effects, okay, like this one, you can see the, the traveling position of the um, RGB strip, of course, and the traveling position of the uh, outer ring that's on the fans. Let me get up closer so you can see that. Um, you can see the position that's traveling. Now, if I was trying to synchronize, say, and... Uh, wanted this to look cool i would have to of course make this traveling effect trap make this fan here also travel upward but as you can see it is traveling downward and same thing with the top ones the top ones would also want to travel in that direction now i could make it do that but in order to do that i would need a lot more length out of the um fan system in here to kind of flip them around and orientate them the way they need to be to make it all work so right now it's actually kind of out of sync there uh if you want if you, i mean if you're being a stickler about full synchronization but i mean in general though it does look cool <laughs> so we can at least give it that right you know we can't knock it too much uh we'll go through some of these patterns here we'll take a look at the white there um, I think that really kind of shows it off. Let me go ahead and flip off the lights in the office here. All right, and then, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, the the patterns that the Sahara Gaming Controller puts out are, are are really really nice, and I I think that if if they're relying on a third party to synchronize with the third party, so that the third party is showing their effects, they're really doing a disservice to themselves 
for what they are actually able to offer some of their customers with uh, you know some expanded capabilities on the controllers by like you know like I said I've got like the memory going on there that um, you know the memory modules that I put RGB covers on and the light strip that I added you know Sahara Gaming does sell a light strip but you know what if you've already got one in your case and you just wanted to add the Sahara Gaming fans so it, it really would make more sense if Sahara Gaming and not only them I'm not picking on them but not only them, but other manufacturers would at least include some adapters. I mean, some some of the guys do. Corsair doesn't. They're a little stingy still, you know. And you can get the Corsair adapters from, like, Pirate Dog Tech, which are really, really nice, but they're kind of pricey. And, you know, but and like I said, again, like on the uh, other stuff that I got, the, the Chinese 6-pin or whatever, uh, you know, I can get those adapters off of... Uh, aliexpress for you know a dime a dozen if you buy them in bulk you know which i usually do buy you know multiples of them but yeah so i don't know guys i i just oop, i just turned them off let me push the button there we go <laughs> go back there um so yeah i can control that with the remote and like i said um i also let me turn on the lights here Ugh could also control these and this is a uh, feature of the sahara gaming control these with the reset button so i can actually just you know take my finger down there and it's actually kind of hard to press on this case but uh let, let's talk about this case <laughs> like i said so much stuff to cover and you know where do i go i keep spinning around um I, I liked working in this case i didn't like the sharp edges of this case um it holds a lot of stuff i mean look at this guys you'll you'll see it for yourself you've got seven fans in there even with three add-in cards on a micro atx motherboard even with three add-in cards well-placed add-in cards i guess i will uh, include that point um that i was still able to get seven fans in this tiny 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 case um I wouldn't expect this case to stay around very long. Um, the company, I've never really heard of them. I think it's one of those fly-by-night uh, new egg ones. So um, get one while you can. And if you missed out on this one, you missed out on this one. Um, bottom line, I don't think you're really missing out on too much. But uh, it's very, very functional. I'll, I'll give it that. It's very small. I'll give it that. I, I like that. It looks good. I mean, I like the front here. Let's uh, go around here and see this. It's it's kind of like that ES Gaming one that I did a uh, video on in white, um, but like smaller and cheaper. So I, I I like this case. There's not too much to say about it. I wish I'd know more about the company to talk about them a little bit, but. Uh, uh, like I said, I, I wouldn't expect this case to be around much longer. Uh, I like it though. <laughs> Oddly enough, I hate it, but I like it. It's, it's, it's weird. I guess you'd have to build in it to see what I'm talking about, why you'd hate it and why you'd like it. But yeah. All right. But it turned out all right. Anyway, so this HP pavilion is now done and it is now upgraded. Um, better results than what i was expecting that turn out i really wasn't expecting the 32 gigs of ram to work in this um that kind of blows my mind actually it's like wow okay so i guess uh everybody's learned something new today including myself so uh in case you didn't know about the 32 gigs uh working in this um don't feel bad i didn't know either it was just experimentation <laughs> but um this 11 year old machine is going to go back to its owner uh tomorrow and this is probably going to be my last build of the year this actually makes uh build number 50 that i submitted to builds.gg in the database so you're going to be seeing my uh, wrench up there or below my name when you look at my profile turned to red uh indicating i'm a master builder i don't know if i'm a master builder i you know 50 builds is what i submitted 50 builds is is but a spit in the bucket of all the builds i've done over the years <laughs> you know um 
Wow. I, you know, I, I got a lot more to come. I got some on the way that I wanted to get to a side project, just as fun projects. I have another Dell 660 build that I wanted to do. Then I got a kid that got a hold of me about a Dell 660, so I might take some priority with his. Um, then I got another guy that needs me to work on his. Then I got a couple of new builds that I wanted to get out. So I've got all kinds of stuff coming up into the new year, but um, this is going to be probably the last video of the year for me, last of my babbling that you're going to see for the year, and then into the new year, we'll have something new coming up. I have one case already that I have been working on, eventually we'll get to that one, and we'll do that video on that one. I don't know what's coming up next, guys. Um, who knows? We'll see. But that's going to be the end of this one. Um, everybody have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year because I probably won't see you again probably into the new year. Uh, we got to work out to see what build we're doing next. But we got another one coming up next. We got several coming up next into the new year. So um, I'll see you guys again next year. Everybody have a great holiday and later.